27th October 1878. The household appears to be under tremendous strain. The sudden illness of Lord Gregory Harrington IV appears to be taking its toll on everyone, especially Madame Lydia. She seems drained and exhausted. The severity of Lord Gregory's pneumonia concerns her night and day. I think she has observed the same thing I have. Lord Gregory is afraid of losing more than just his life. Neither him nor young Madame Lydia have any posterity to inherit Ashbury Manor with all its estates and wealth. Nevertheless, we are all exerting ourselves to make sure matters run smoothly. The servants are frantically trying to keep things in order, while Lord Gregory's advisers are taking care of county matters. Oh, how I miss the days when their father headed this household. Nothing was at stake, and everything seemed perfect. I certainly took that time of my life for granted. Thirtieth October, 1878. It is with a heavy heart that I pen these words. Lord Gregory Harrington IV has passed away. The physicians said that his added stress about Ashbury Manor accelerated his death. Why do men cling so tenaciously to their earthly cares and possessions? Madame Lydia's grief is deep though I cannot imagine what her state would be without her dear friend Peter. He has been a great source of comfort. Life will be challenging for Madame Lydia now as the inheritance has fallen to her. She will be instated as the Duchess of the County and owner of Ashbury Manor. This evening, after most of the matters of the Duke's death were attended to, Madame Lydia held a meeting with several of the best engineers and architects in the county. I found this rather peculiar. Heaven only knows what she has planned.
All employees of the Ashbury Manor Wine Cellar. As most of you know, there are rumours of a strange, unseen being roaming around the cellar. I would like to declare that these rumours are true. I understand that most, if not all of you, may no longer desire to work here. Please trust me when I say that there is nothing to fear. The being has and will cause no harm to anyone. It commonly opens and closes doors and on rare occasion it pushes over one or two barrels. Its footsteps have also been heard around the cellar. Please note that I have brought this matter before Duke Harrington. He has ordered that work in the cellar continues as normal. We cannot let our wine production be slowed. Douglas Atkins, Cellar Overseer. Second November 1878. Since the passing of Duke Gregory Harrington IV, several of the cellar workers have left. Many of them believe that there is no reason to continue working here, especially with that unseen being roaming around. I fear that I too may have to seek alternative employment. There are more pressing matters around Ashbury Manor as well that need attending to. There is talk of a ghost roaming the upper rooms of the manor, and many, including myself, believe that it is the ghost of the Duke. Hence, wine production is no longer a priority here. The health of Madame Lydia has not improved. Regardless, she seems to be the only one holding things together around here. Although, I think she may even tell us to abandon the wine production altogether. These are strange times for us here. Our future is uncertain. I must mention though, if it wasn't for Madame Lydia, heaven only knows what would become of this manor.
5th November 1878. Yesterday, Madame Lydia ordered the stoppage of wine production. The cellar will now be closed. It seems as though my concerns of unemployment have been realised. Most of the men spent yesterday packing things away. Only Harold and I are left now, finalising the closure. I have a spare moment to write in here while I wait for Harold to fetch a pulley to aid us in our box stacking. Once that is completed, I will remain to check that everything is in order and then lock up. He has been gone for an unusually long time now. I must make mention of the unseen being. While waiting for Harold, I decided to check on a few things in the kitchen. I noticed the being following me. That is something it has never done before. Even when I moved on to another room, it was still following me. I am starting to grow uneasy about this being. I pray that once I have locked up, it does not follow me home. I feel greatly for my life. 
It seems as though I have angered the unseen being here in the cellar. Earlier on, I went to go and look for Harold because he had not returned with the pulley. I was stopped at the staircase by the being. It was growling at me. Something else it had never done before. I tried to make a break for the staircase, but the being knocked me over. It then went into a frenzy and broke the supporting beam, causing the collapse of the entire staircase. In my hysteria, I ran to the engine room and locked myself in. And here I am, alone. My pen and paper are my only comfort. Perhaps that monster of a being will get tired of waiting and move on to the other parts of the cellar. I may then be able to get out through the back door.
19th August 1882. Today the architects and engineers finished their work in Ashbury Manor. Several years have passed since they began. This morning, Madame Lydia told me about the work that had been done. Some secret rooms hidden by complex mechanisms have been built into the manor. I was not told about what exactly these rooms were for. I suspect that Madame Lydia has some things she desires to be hidden. One of my fellow servants mentioned today how pleased they are with how affairs are being run in the county. It seems that Madame Lydia has proved to be a fine duchess. I attribute that to Peter. Many of us in the manor believe that when Madame Lydia comes of age, she will marry Peter. Perhaps then there will be posterity who will inherit Ashbury Manor. That would please me greatly, although it may not be in my day.
9th January 1883 There is an element of fear creeping into the manor. Every servant is uneasy. Strange phenomena as well as ghost sightings have been reported in the upper rooms. All these years of rumor and speculation have ended. Madame Lydia, including myself, believe that it is the ghost of the late Duke Gregory IV. Although Madame Lydia, surprisingly, does not seem too concerned about it. It is strange to relate how this ghostly activity increased soon after she had her left arm amputated. The amputation seems to have helped little to stop the infection from spreading. Peter is hopeful though. He seems very fond of Madame Lydia, despite her having lost her arm.
24th April, 1883. In two days we leave Ashbury Manor. This morning the local government tried to hold another meeting. Yet again it was interrupted by the ghost, but this time things got out of hand. The meeting had barely commenced when tables, chairs and legal documents started flying across the room. Everyone fled in terror, including some of the servants. A quick decision was made by the local government to abandon the manor and dissolve our county into another. All who remain here this evening are those of us who are very reluctant to leave, even with all these strange things happening. We have no choice though. There is nothing for us here anymore. If only Madam Lydia was still with us. Her amputation merely slowed the process of her death. The infection had spread too much.
25th April 1883. It is my last day here. I have spent most of my time getting the upper rooms in order. Everyone else has left, but I could not bear leaving the rooms of Lord Gregory and Madame Lydia in the state they were in. Oh, how I miss those two! I had an odd experience today. This afternoon, as I was leaving the lounge, I was startled by one of the suits of armor that had somehow moved to the center of the hallway. It was holding out a note which I cautiously retrieved. The note is addressed to Peter. It was then that I noticed the suit of armor was missing its left arm. I am not sure what to make of it, but I shall pay a visit to Peter tomorrow after I have left the manor and give him the note. It seems quite important.
18th November 1878. This is my fourth day here as the new gravekeeper. Finally, a comfortable career. No more hard construction work, no more heavy lifting, and most importantly, no more garbage collecting. My responsibilities are fairly trivial, like trimming the bushes and showing people to their deceased loved ones. In fact, the hardest thing about this job is when I'm occasionally required to dig a hole in preparation for a new grave. But that's not why I've decided to start writing in my new journal. No, the Duchess herself, Madame Lydia, came over to visit me. She asked me if I could find her a spot for a new gravesite. She even supplied her own coffin and tombstone. A stunning tombstone, I must say. A well-crafted cross with a brilliant carving of an eagle. I asked her who it was for, but she said it was for no one. After I have helped her with finding a suitable location and her men have placed the tombstone and buried the coffin, she just left. That's it, went back into her mansion. November 1878. Boy, do I have an interesting story to tell. This morning, a couple of men brought in a body of Harold Donnelly. I was told that he, would you believe it, was found in the attic right above Madame Lydia's bedroom. They found him all tied up in rope whilst hanging upside down. Apparently the reason why the body was found in the first place was because Lydia herself complained about a stench in her room. I also heard another rumor that she used to keep rope next to her bed that she used for outdoor activity and games. But one day she couldn't find her beloved rope. But now here it is wrapped around the constricted body of Harold. Is there a murderer in our midst? Well. I'm now left to clean up the mess. Unfortunately, Harold's family couldn't afford a coffin or a tombstone. But you know what? I'm going to be a good Samaritan this time. There is that empty coffin that Madame Lydia buried here. Apparently, the coffin only holds a small glass shard. I could just push it aside. There's plenty room for a body. 13th of April, 1893. I am shaking even as I write. Where to begin? Earlier this evening, on my way back to my house, I noticed that much of the cemetery has been disturbed. Someone has broken down a few of the trees and shrubbery, and three tombstones have fallen over. I continued exploring the cemetery, and to my dismay, I discovered the grave of Harold has been robbed. Or at least that's what I thought. I opened the coffin, and to my horror, the body was gone. The glass shard was still in it though. I noticed some tracks leading out of the cemetery. It seemed to be headed towards Ashbury Manor. I decided to follow them, and when I approached the river, I saw the decomposed body of Harold limping towards the mansion. It was hideous and frightening. So much so that I froze and just stood there like a petrified coward. It was foolish of me, but fortunately the beast disappeared and I ran back to the cemetery. This grave was tainted, but I was too afraid to do anything about it. I decided to close the coffin and bury it again.
My dearest Peter, I hope you have found this letter sooner than later. Under the Bible is the key to the bank's safe deposit box, number 217. In it is my last will and testament. It states that you, Peter T. Wilkinson, will inherit Ashbury Manor, along with all its wealth and estates. My brother had no knowledge of this before he died. He always felt that the estate should remain in the family. But, for obvious reasons, that cannot happen anymore. For quite some time now, I have been searching for a successor. But the more I thought about it, the more I realized the obvious. You were the only one that was truly there for me. All those years you have helped me through the hard times. But more importantly, you were there during the good times, when everyone thought that I didn't need anyone, when the future of Ashbury Manor wasn't in jeopardy. That is why I have, I have hidden this key completely out of sight, to prevent other, more determined men from taking the estate from us. That will not happen. My brother will make sure of that. But I fear he may try to stop even you from taking Ashbury Manor from the Harrington family, even in death. However, once the estate is now yours, all will be right again. My heart sorrows when I think that our lives could have been different if circumstances allowed. But knowing that you still live and have a full life ahead of you. I hope to improve it by giving all that I have. This is my last gift to you. Be well, my love. Yours truly, Lydia.
Dear traveller, I do not know who you are, or even how old you are, but judging from your actions, there's no doubt in my mind that Peter Wilkinson had sent you to retrieve the key. You knew exactly where to look, and only Peter knew its true location. I pray that you are successful in your quest. I would also be grateful if you could give him the letter you found that was intended for him. Now that the estate will become his, all will return back to normal. All paranormal activity will disappear now that the estate no longer belongs to the Harrington family. The ghost, my brother, will no longer have that anchor to keep him here. And I too will finally move on to the realm that awaits us. I could not bear to leave Gregory behind in the maddened state that he was, but now it is finally over, thanks to you, my young brave venturer, my hero, my key to freedom. Sincerely, Duchess Lydia Harrington.